Okay, the fourth process we're looking at is the gum bichromate process. And for this, we need any water-soluble gum. I'm using gum arabic because this, the, this is a classic gum. This is the one that was used originally. But um, any other water-based gum can be used. Um, right, so we take, first of all, one teaspoonful of gum arabic, like so and pour it into the pot. Now then to this we're going to add a colour. You can use any colour you like. This is the beauty of this process. The colour of the previous processes has been determined by the process themselves, but with this one you can use any colour you like. And I'm going to use red poster paint. You can use watercolour paint, you can use gouache or poster paint. Providing it's a water-soluble paint or colour it's perfectly fine. In fact, you can put powder colours in as well. So about uh, enough mm, to cover about the size of a pea. If, if, if you dip a coffee stirrer into that, maybe about half an inch, quarter of an inch, half an inch on the end of the coffee stirrer will be enough. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape that into there and I'm going to mix the colour into the gum. Try and get as much of the gum of the colour I can into the gum. Okay, oops, what a mess. And I'm going to stir that into the gum nice and evenly. Poster colour gives the strongest colour, gouache is a bit weaker, and post, um, watercolour paint is the weakest of the lot. So I would suggest as a starting point, start with poster colour paints uh, because they'll give you the strongest colour. And we mix that up like so until we've got a nice even mix of gum and colour. Having done that, what we now do is put the potassium dichromate solution in to sensitise it. Potassium dichromate was discovered to be light sensitive in uh, about the 1840s by a Scotsman called Mungo Ponton. Now we take one teaspoonful of potassium dichromate solution and pour that into the mix. Potassium dichromate is its not too dangerous but it is a slightly unpleasant chemical. If you get it on your fingers wash it off immediately. Better still you might do better to actually wear rubber gloves while you're handling it. it does tend to cause blisters, but it's providing you're sensible with it, it won't be a problem. Okay, so I'm going to put that potassium dichromate into the mix and give the whole thing a stir to mix the dichromate. What the potassium dichromate does is to harden the gel the gum selectively where it's exposed to light. So those parts of the paper that are exposed to the most light will harden the most and they won't wash away at the end of the process. So there we have it, that's the sensitive mixture. So now I'm going to coat the piece of paper. Right, here we go. Where's my brush? brush here it is. Right now, to coat the paper, the technique I recommend here is the brush technique. You can easily see where you've coated because the, the mixture is coloured and uh, this mixture is really too sticky to put on using the rod technique. At least I find it too sticky. So I'm going to get a brush. Uh, the brush I'm using is uh, a synthetic filament brush because they wash out more easily. At the end of this process you need to wash your brushes out very thoroughly. So I'm going to get solution into the brush like that quite generously and then I'm going to brush it on to the paper again brush it on with long even strokes spread it out evenly brush two ways like that smooth it out long even strokes you can leave a sort of rough edge if you want to as you're brushing it on. But when you're finished, 
smooth all the brush strokes out from one end to the other in a nice even sweep. This liquid soaks into the paper quite quickly and you'll feel it starting to thicken even as you brush it on. So don't waste too much time brushing it out. Okay, there we are. We've coated that piece of paper, so that now is going to go into the dryer. Okay, and the final stage of the gun bichromate process is to expose the paper. So again, we take a clip frame, we put the sensitised paper on like that, then we put the negative on top, the piece of glass to trap the two together, and then clamp it all together with the elastic bands. Ready. Now, again, this will take maybe six to eight minutes out in bright sunlight. You have to judge, learn to judge the exposure both from the density of your negative and the intensity of the light, but bright day, moderately dense neg, I would say about eight minutes. So I'm going to put this outside now to expose. Right, the final stage of the gun bichromate process is just simply a wash. So we take the print out of the clip frame, you can see there is a sort of shadowy image on that piece of paper. But now what we're going to do is wash it and wash away all the unexposed dichromate and all the unhardened gum. And bit by bit you'll see the picture emerging. There we go. Okay, so we now just wash the print in cold water for a few minutes to wash away all the unreacted potassium dichromate and all the unhardened gum and as we do so you'll see the picture emerge. Keep washing until the orange colour of the dichromate has all disappeared and you'll be left then with a, an image in hardened gum and the colour that you put in. Now one of the beauties of this process is that you're not restricted to any particular colour and if you want to you can do multiple colours on the same piece of paper either at the same time or you can do multiple layer exposure so you could do a red layer, a blue layer and a yellow layer using masks so you can eventually end up with a three coloured image. So there we have it. It still needs a few more minutes of washing, but there we have the final gum by chromate print. And that just needs a few more minutes washing to wash the last of the dichromate out of the paper. And then it needs drying and it's finished.